Hey Browns fans, Nathan Zagura here with another edition of the Draft on Tap presented by Bud Light and as always joined by the athletics draft expert Dane Brugler and Dane, a position that everybody loves to talk about. Wide receivers, they're fun, they are exciting. The Browns have added Amari Cooper into their wide receiver room. They bring back Donovan Peoples-Jones and last year's third round pick, the speedster Anthony Schwartz as well as Demetric Felton. Jakeem Grant is in the mix, Jamarcus Bradley, but it's a position a lot of people think the Browns will go early, as early as 44, perhaps even a move up. So let's start with number 44. I'm intrigued by George Pickens out of Georgia. I'm hoping he'll be there. I don't know if he will. I know in your mock, he's gone to pick 37. Why is everybody going crazy for the young man out of Georgia? 6'3", 195 pounds, ran in the four fours, and you love his ball tracking skills. You love his ability in those 50-50 contested windows. Uh, there's there's a lot to like about uh, you know what he is now, but also what he's going to be. He's still a very young player. Uh, he burst onto the scene as a true freshman at Georgia, had eight touchdowns, led the team in receiving. Uh, this past year, only played in four games because he missed uh, most of the year with an ACL injury uh, from from earlier in the year, and that's something that plays into his evaluation. Uh, the medicals will obviously be important, but as long as uh, the doctors give you two thumbs up on the knee, uh, this is a tall, long athlete, very graceful when the ball's in the air, plays with toughness, uh, plays with a little bit of grit, which you love to see from your receivers. He can be a true X at the next level. And talking about second rounders, you can't say that about a lot of these guys. With the ball tracking skills, the size speed uh, combination, if he returns to that pre-injury form, continues to develop as a route runner, uh, you're going to have something there with George Pickens. Speaking of size and speed, perhaps one of the biggest risers in this draft, Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. He, a lot of people think he's going in the first round now because he's 6'4", runs, one, runs in the 4'3", and, and that just doesn't come around very often. You're not as high on him, but you understand from a trade standpoint why there's this buzz. What does he bring to a team? Yeah, and, and I like him. I think he's, you know, I would, I would draft him in the second round, no doubt, but it would not be surprising, like you said, if we see him off the board in the first because uh, when you have a guy with that long athletic frame, that, that gliding acceleration, uh, four, three, six in the 40, uh, 38 and a half inch vert. Uh, it, nobody crushed the pre-draft process quite like Christian Watson was outstanding at the senior bowl, uh, did an outstanding job at the combine, then his pro day. So there's a lot of traits to work with there. But if you're drafting an FCS receiver, you want to see him dominate just a little bit more. Uh, and you want to see fewer drops. Uh, he's a guy that had more drops than touchdown passes uh, over his career. That's, that's a little bit of a red flag for me when I'm scouting receivers. Uh, you want to see that touchdown num number be a little bit uh, higher than the drops. So still unpolished in some areas, but understand why teams would be ready to bet on those traits uh, as a guy that could eventually become a starter for you. A little bit older, too, uh, for a rookie. Uh, you know, he's a redshirt senior. He's going to be a 23-year-old rookie. But in terms of the speed, the size, I can certainly understand why some teams are talking themselves into Christian Watson in the first. All right, let me throw a couple of names at you. Some small school, some injured. Jalen Tolbert out of South Alabama. John Mechie out of Alabama, who suffered at the ACL like his teammate Jamison Williams. And then Wandale Robinson out of Kentucky, who's starting, I feel like, getting a little bit of buzz as well. Jalen Tolbert, 6'1", 195, uh, you know, a little bit uh, overlooked because he went to South Alabama, but you know what? He chose South Alabama over Michigan State, over some other bigger name schools uh, in order to stay closer to home. Uh, but he's a guy that can play across the formation, uh, not a burner per se, you know, speed is not really uh, what he does best, but his ability to control his routes and throttle up, throttle down, uh, create some of that separation. It's what he does best. South Alabama never had a thousand yard receiver until this guy, and he did it twice each of the last two years. There's a lot to like about uh, about Jalen Tolbert being an X, being on the, in the slot and what he can bring to your offense. Uh, John Mechie is a guy that you want to hear Nick Saban uh, just gush about a wide receiver. Ask him about John Mechie. Uh, I mean, he just, he gushes about the way he uh, attacks the position. Uh, another guy that's very detail oriented. He plays physical, he plays hurt, um, and he just goes about his business and makes plays. Uh, he was highly productive last year, had almost 100 catches before uh, he went down with that ACL injury. 5'11", 190, uh, you know, speed, we, we didn't get an official 40-yard dash on him, but probably in that 4'48", the 4'53 range, very average speed for the wide receiver position. 
But what you love about him is how seasoned he is as a route runner. He understands how to manipulate coverage, find the blind spot of uh, those defensive backs. And really, he's going to be a quarterback's best friend because he's always available. Uh, and then Wondell Robinson, who's a little bit undersized, 5'8", under 180, uh, really short arms. And so you kind of worry about that in terms of just the catch radius. But his ability after the catch, that's where he's dynamic. That's that open field athleticism, his his vision to weave through the through the defense, catch and run threat. Uh, that that's really what you're banking on with Wandale Robinson as that slot option, the underneath game, uh, what he can do in the open field. That that's what drives uh, the attention towards Wandale Robinson. And then in the third round, you had in your most recent mock the Browns going with Alec Pierce out of Cincinnati and a guy who feels like he's kind of being overlooked somewhat, but is getting kind of that late pre-draft push a little bit. And I've seen Jordy Nelson as a comp for him, and we know how prolific Jordy Nelson was with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, and you, know, you love uh, athletes where it's just in the bloodlines. And that, that's true with Alec Pierce, where uh, you know his mom was a big-time volleyball player at Northwestern. Uh, you know, his dad uh, played football at Northwestern. His brother is an all-conference basketball player in college. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's in his family where just these big athletes, 6'3", 210, um, you know, there's uh, the tall angular frame. He's got that straight line speed, jumped over 40 inches. And you see that on tape with his ability to high point, go up and get the football. Uh, I still think as a route runner, it's it's he's still developing. That's why we're talking about him as more of a third rounder than uh, going earlier. But as he continues to grow and develop and adds branches to his route tree, you get excited about what a guy like this, that size, that athleticism, that, that, that springy ability to go get the football and play vertically, you get excited about what he could be. So Alec Pierce in the third round, I think would be awfully appealing to this team. This position is going to be fascinating. It feels, is, is this a, a deep group to you? I know there's a lot of talent at the top. We talked about all those guys going in the first round, but it feels like second, third round, and even beyond, there are going to be quality options available. Yeah, I think it's a little top heavy because we're going to see six, seven, maybe even eight receivers go in that first round, second round, third round, and then even into the fourth. I think it drops off a little bit later on, but the first four rounds, we're going to see a lot of receiver talent come off that board. The Browns certainly will be interested in that position come draft time. For the great Dane Brugler, I'm Nathan Zagura thanking you for joining us for another edition of Draft on Tap presented by Bud Light.